So, just now we were um, talking about why do we introduce the parameter, and I gave you an explanation for it. Um, the really cool thing about it is once you know what the parameter is on a parameter, what it means, you're like, ooh, this is cool. This is a new geometric way to look at a parameter and understand it, okay? But you can do more cool stuff with the parameter, and we're going to spend the rest of this topic exploring that. Chords are one of the objects that we're interested in. To make sure we know what we're talking about, let's think about circles, because that's where we've met chords already. What is a chord on a circle? What's the definition of a chord? Okay, so I'm going to be a little more specific than a line. A chord has a beginning and an end. It doesn't just go on forever. So that has a more technical name. It starts with an I. It's an interval. So a chord is an interval that connects two points on the circle. That's it. Once you have that definition, it's exactly the same for a parabola, which is kind of nice, right? So you pick two points, any two points you like, here and here. Let's call these guys, say, P and Q. And the interval joining these is a chord, right? So here's a chord, you get a chord, you get a chord, everyone gets a chord. That's all we're talking about, okay? Now, then it becomes a natural question to ask, well, what is the equation of said chord? Um, when we have two points on the parabola, I can now define them in terms of a single number, right? Before I would have had to have like, know the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and know them independently. But now I know them together. So if this is our regular locus definition of a parabola, right, then I can say any point on the parabola is in the form, now do you remember, what were the parametric equations I gave you right at the beginning? 2AT, AT squared. 2AT, AT squared, okay? Uh, which sounds suspi suspiciously like 2 pi r pi r squared, which it, anyway. So you've got these two coordinates here. For any arbitrary point, let's say at point P, uh, capital P, for the sake of convenience, let's call its coordinates to a lowercase p, a lowercase p squared. So in this case, the particular parameter I'm using is little p. Should we make that p then? So for this guy over here, yeah. if we have a point capital Q, how about, what a novel idea, I call its coordinates to a q, a q squared. Okay, so what I've got is I've used the parametric equations to write the coordinates in parametric form, okay? And now you've just got two points, so you can use two point formula to work out the equation of the chord, right? So equation of chord PQ, okay? What's it gonna look like? Well, the equation of a two point sort of um, line thing looks like this, right? Y minus Y1, X minus X1. Uh, let's see, let's call this one x1, y1, so that would make this up here, and this down here, is that okay? What are you going to get on the right hand side? Y. Yep, so instead of y minus y1, it'll be y2, y2 minus y1, how does that look? Is that okay? All divided through by x2 minus x1. How are you going? Just a substitution, yeah? x on y1, x2, y2. Now, it's very nice to see all of this stuff is going to cancel out. Well, not all of it, but a lot of stuff, right? Um, for example, on the right-hand side, what easy stuff can you see that will cancel? A. The A's are going to go, right? Uh, this A, which is a common factor in the top, will also be a common factor down the bottom. That's good. What else can I get rid of? Okay, so on the top, I'm going to have to rewrite this because too much stuff is in my brain right now. Um, Q minus P, Q plus P is difference of squares on the numerator. And on the denominator, there's still a 2 hanging around. And then there's the Q minus P that Shayan suggested I cancel, which I can. Right? Uh, I might as well write the left-hand side because I'm about to reuse it. Okay, so cancel, cancel. This is looking better already. Now, this guy over here on the uh, right hand side, remember where it came from. Where it came from was y2 minus y1 on x2 minus x1. What is that? That's gradient, right? Um, the two point formula has gradient baked into it. And so therefore, since I'm going to get the equation of a line and the right hand side is the gradient, 
I kind of might as well leave it like that, right? Um, if I can leave the gradient there, then it's going to be easy to write this in like y equals mx plus b form, which is like a useful form, right? So this guy on the right hand side, I'm going to leave this as a half p plus q. That's all that gets left on the right hand side. Do you agree? While I'm at it, I will multiply both sides by this. Okay, so that leaves me with um, x minus 2ap. How's that look? Is that okay? How's your brain going? <laughs> um, so I have just rejigged the right hand side a teeny bit, and then I've multiplied both sides by this denominator. So far, so good. Now, if you have a look carefully, look carefully. Um, on the left, right hand side, I've got my mx right there. Do you see that? You see there are no more x terms anywhere? So therefore, I can write um, y equals m, that's m there, times x. And I'm expecting a plus b, right? A plus b. But look, the plus b is made of two things. There's this stuff times that, and then there's this guy, right? So I'm going to probably have to add it to both sides and get y as the subject. Do you agree? So let's do this, these last two pieces on this side. I'm going to have minus half p plus q times 2ap. Are you OK with that? You see where I got that from? Through the expansion of the brackets. And then I've got an ap squared there. Brain doing OK? Can I cancel some stuff? Yes. What can I cancel? Four, yep, fantastic. Cancel, cancel. That's good. What else can I get rid of? What, what's, what's, what happens when I expand this? That's going to be minus ap squared. Oh, look, I have a plus ap squared there. That's convenient. And then I'll be left with minus apq. You see that? So that'll be left behind. So what this leaves me with is this. There's the mx. And then here is the b. Hmm. Put that guy in a box. That is the equation of a chord. Okay? So if you know two points and you know what their gradients are, p and q, then you can state what the equation of the chord is between them. 